I've been using these Atli Eon time-lapse cameras for a little while now, and in this video I wanted to do a simple test just to see how long the camera will last using a battery bank. Now the built-in internal rechargeable lithium-ion battery will last for six days if you have the interval set to 30 minutes or above. Uh, apparently it can't really last any longer than six days, even if you were to take one photo per day. So what we're going to do is use this battery bank from Anki. This is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank. Um, now, as far as power goes, for those of you who don't know, um, the milliamp. power rating of a battery bank isn't universal to other things just like drive or just straight batteries. So in other words, this battery bank here is providing a is 5 volts out and it has a 20,000 million or 20 amp hour just for short 20 amp hour rating, but that's at 5 volts. It doesn't really tell you the entire power that it has. You have to go by watt hours. So a 12 volt battery that out that has a 12 amp hour uh, rating is going to have more power in it than a battery bank that has 12 amp hour because it runs at a lower voltage. So that converts to watt hours, which basically it's, it just means that, you know, the total capacity that it can run for. Um, so anyways, with that aside, we're going to go ahead and hook this battery, battery bank up to the Atli Eon time-lapse camera and just basically see how long it lasts. All right, I got the time-lapse camera set up here, which is running off the battery bank and it's just sitting on my windowsill, which is gonna be doing a time-lapse of this Christmas cactus here. This here produces red flowers and it should be flowering in the next month and a half or so. Uh, one thing about battery banks like this though, these portable battery banks, these are not really designed for a slow drain. These are meant for uh, quick charging and things like that. And if you leave these on, uh, or if there was a way to leave these on without them self-turning off, which I have tested with other uh, brands of battery banks before, they will actually just self-drain without anything ho hooked up to them. So it's hard to say how long this will actually last. I mean, this provides a lot of power. If you were to take the same amount of power in AA batteries and uh, slow drain them, this would probably last for uh, probably, a, I don't know, pretty close to a year if I had to guess on uh, that kind of power. So when it comes to time-lapse cameras, if you're setting them up to run for like, uh, you know, months at a time, it's not really ideal that a camera has a rechargeable built-in battery. In this case, it's not really built-in, it's just, it's inside the camera and it's removable. But when you're talking about a time-lapse camera or anything that's slow drain, you really want batteries that are not rechargeable, no matter what kind of battery it is, uh, like alkaline batteries, AA batteries, um, or just alkaline batteries like 9 volts you'd find in smoke detectors. Those are designed to work for slow drain over long periods of time. If you use rechargeable batteries, such as like this battery bank or what's inside the camera, they will actually self-drain over a period of time. They won't hold their charge like a regular alkaline battery that's not rechargeable does. So like my Brino time-lapse cameras, those can last for a month at a time on just uh, two or four AA batteries, depending on what model I'm talking about. And that's a long period of time taking uh, pictures once every 10 minutes. So this camera can't do that uh, because it has a rechargeable battery. Plus it does other stuff like it broadcasts and receives Wi-Fi. So if you were to take this camera and just set it up, the most, like I said before, the most you're going to get out of it is six days, even at very long intervals. And that's because it's constantly powered on. The Brino time-lapse cameras I mentioned, those things are actually, uh, they're designed in a way to use very minimal power. And they actually go into this very, very low drain standby mode until they are ready to turn back on and take one photo and then turn back off. Uh, this camera here is essentially just on and it's kind of just siphoning power little bits at a time constantly. It doesn't really go into a standby mode. Otherwise, if it did, it might actually last a little bit longer, but this thing has to broadcast Wi-Fi so you can connect your phone to it. Otherwise, you can't control it. That's just kind of how it works. So ideally, for a camera like this to last a long period of time, you would want to have a battery you can put in there that's um, uh, not a rechargeable battery. But in this case, that's not really possible because it would still drain it about the same anyways because it needs to be on. So anyways, with that little tangent aside, we're going to go ahead and leave this set up. We're going to see how long this battery bank actually lasts here powering this camera. And then we'll come back once the time lapse is done. All right, so here's a little update. It's the same day, just a few hours later. The battery bank is off and so is the camera. 
which is kind of weird because you can unplug the power from the camera and it will just continuously run a battery. It kind of works like a battery backup with its internal battery. So I don't really know what happened here. It just kind of stopped working. I'm gonna to have to look into it. And just for reference, I did also have it set to power saving mode as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this and see what happened. All right, I tried seeing if the camera was connected to the Wi-Fi and it wasn't. Uh, and it was obviously off. These lights were off. That tells me that the battery bank had shut off. And there's an indicator light on the front of the camera there that was off. That should either be red or green. If it's red, it shows it's on uh, external power. If it's green, it's on battery power. So uh, I turned this back on. I just hit the button on the side and this came back on. The camera came back on. Uh, so I think maybe what happened is because it was set up in power saving mode or eco mode, uh, I think maybe it had started to draw too little power from the power port and these battery banks typically will shut themselves off if there's not enough power draw coming out of them. So I shut the power saving mode off, uh, or I should say it's on the common setting, which means that when it's on battery power with the internal battery in the camera, it will turn on power saving mode, but when it's using external power, uh, it won't save, it won't use the power saving mode. So maybe it'll draw more current out of this and this will stay on. So we're gonna try that. Uh, there's actually a little screenshot up on the screen here I'll show you. Uh, you can see that the battery wasn't even, wasn't even draining really in the um, camera, it was still at like 98%. So the batteries, the, neither battery had drained whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this go again and we'll see what happens. All right, it's been 24 hours now and turning power saving mode off on the camera has worked. The battery bank is still on. You can see the blue lights on there and all four lights are still on. So it is drawing very little power, which is a good thing. Uh, I just wish that you could actually use a battery bank with it on power saving mode. But I think most battery banks do all the same thing as far as I know, I, I have several of them and they will all do the same thing. They will shut themselves off if there's not enough current draw coming out of them. Uh, I'm sure there's a way around that. You can do something that's maybe a do, your, do it yourself thing where you can hook up power to it, uh, you know, with the battery system or maybe not use a rechargeable bank and maybe just hit use a battery pack that's powered by AA batteries. And I'm sure there's other ways around it. Anyways, the point is it's working and we'll see how long this actually lasts in the battery bank without power saving mode on. And then we'll come back and uh, update it later. All right, it's later on in the same day here and I was curious to see what the power draw was for this camera when it's in non-power saving mode. And you can see there in the green, it's pulling about 120 milliamps and that kind of translates to about 2.2 watt hours. Now, according to the rating of this battery bank, which is 20,100 milliamp hours, that should last for about seven days on a charge. Uh, I'm also gonna see if, when I, when I turn off the, uh, or turn on the power saving mode in the camera, uh, what the current draw is on there, and then uh, come back and update this. All right, so the camera's been in power saving mode for a little bit of time here, and what I've been noticing is that the power bank has been inter intermittently trying to turn itself off here because there's not enough power draw here. So um, this has been sitting in sort of an idle state of running at 120 milliamps for a few minutes since I put it in that mode. And then I watched it go down to about 80 milliamps and then now it's reading uh, basically zero. So it's probably running in the microamp range or it might just be com completely in almost like a standby sleep mode. I'm not really sure. But it's drawing so little power here that this, this battery bank basically sees it as nothing and it just turns itself off. So one way that the company can probably actually uh, fix this so that it can be used with battery banks like this without having to modify your battery bank is actually just uh, do something with the firmware of the camera where every 30 seconds or so it might pulse a uh, 100, 130 milliamps for about two seconds and then go back to his other power state, the lower power state, and that should stop the battery bank from shutting off completely. All right, it's been 48 hours since I hooked up this battery bank and I really wish I would have hooked up this little uh, metering device here sooner so I can actually monitor how many milliamps it's actually been using, but we're already down to one light here. So it's getting very, very low at this point. It's not warm whatsoever. Um, the camera itself, it doesn't really feel all that warm. If I had my thermal camera, I could probably see that it's just slightly warm, but it, it's cool to the touch, I'll put it that way. 
So as of right now, according to this, this is only pulled, uh, looks like 2,500 milliamp hours, and that's supposed to be a 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank. Now that is, uh, I think I might've said already, this is uh, a used bank, I've used it quite a bit. So what I might actually do is hook up another battery bank that is newer, and I will have it fully charged, and then I'll put this old device on here, and we'll monitor how much it's actually using. Because as of right now, this really should be lasting longer according to how much this is actually pulling. All right, I've switched out the battery banks. This one here is from RAV Power. This is a 30,000 milliamp hour battery bank, or I believe it is actually 109 watt hours. The other one was, I think, like 72 watt hours. So that other one only lasted, uh, I think it was just a little over two days, maybe uh, two and a half days, maybe a little bit less than that. And I found that it only used about uh, 3,000, or a little over 3,000 milliamp hours. And really that battery bank should have output a lot more than that. I mean, that's really only the power of like one 18650 battery, and that thing has multiple 18650 batteries in it. So I'm not really sure if that battery bank actually isn't all that good, um, which is kind of weird because I've used it plenty in the past using like lens warmers for cameras and it ran just fine for as long as it should have. So I'm not sure if, if just by having these battery banks on, if they're just like phantom draining power, just simply from being on. Um, so I'm testing it with this one here. And what's interesting about this one is I've never really seen it do this before, but the lights actually shut off. And I'm pretty sure I've always noticed those lights on when it's using power. Maybe it's because this isn't draining a whole lot of power all at once that the lights just shut off and it's going into a lower power state just to save on power, I guess. I guess we'll find out maybe tomorrow morning and we'll see what happens. Uh, right now it's only used 377 milliamp hours. So uh, I think I had this plugged in for a couple of hours. Now what I might actually do if it's still working tomorrow, um, I will maybe put this camera into a uh, uh, the power saving mode and then we'll see if this still outputs power. Uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell, but as long as, I guess as long as this display is lit up, um, I, I guess we'll know it's using power, so we'll have to come back to it. All right, it's the next day and we have used uh, about 1768 milliamp hours and if I push the button on this side It shows that the battery is still fully charged. So it's looking promising here I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on uh, Power saving mode and we'll see what happens before we do that. I plugged in my little uh, Metering device here. I'm not really sure what these are called into the other battery. I had this fully charged I let it sit there for about two minutes and I was just seeing if this would turn off and it just did, so I'm just showing that here. Uh, so this is off right now, which means that this battery bank has now shut, uh, shut off its power going out completely. Uh, before it was showing on the display, it was showing the voltage, but no current draw, and it wasn't even counting the timer down, uh, but it was still on. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back into my other battery bank. We'll turn the camera on power saving mode, and if this turns off, then that means, uh, that, means that that one is also turning off. All right, so I tried running the camera on the power saving mode, and of course, we, even with this battery bank, as I've said, they all tend to turn off if they're not pulling enough power. Um, so I'm gonna have to turn it back on to non-power saving mode and go from there. Um, I mean, really, I, I really think that this company needs to uh, update the firmware to try to keep battery banks alive because someone like me, I might be able to rig something up, but the average person who would be buying this product probably wants to use a regular battery bank and just plug it in and not have to worry about doing any kind of DIY stuff to make it work the way that you know it should work. So we'll turn this on here and then we'll see um, how long it actually lasts. Uh, and good thing there's a timer on this and everything. I can look at the data. All right, just a little update here. So we are at 61 and three quarter hours according to this little device here. And we have used about half the battery. Of course, there's only four lights on here. That doesn't really say it's exactly half, but that's where it's at right now. So it's looking promising. I'll come back and uh, I'll see how long this lasts. All right, here's another update. Uh, the battery bank is now down to one light. So 25% or less uh, power is left. So 
It has used 60 watt hours so far, and it's been running for 91 hours. So uh, still, it, that's quite a bit less than what the battery bank is rated for, although it's definitely doing better than the other one I was using. Um, I, I, I still think that these battery banks are not really designed for uh, continuous, you know, long-term use, long-term drain. I think it's because these actually, I can feel that this part in here where the power comes out is slight, slightly warm. It's not, I wouldn't say it's hot. Um, it's, if I feel here, this feels like ambient temperature and over here is warmer. Uh, and then this device here doesn't really feel warm at all. This, this isn't using really hardly any power whatsoever. So it's not this, um, I, I'm not really sure how it works, but that's, there's obviously a, a conversion. There is some sort of a transformer in there, not the typical type of transformer, but it has to take the voltage and it has to, to change it and its output. And in doing so, uh, there's some amount of inefficiency that comes out. So I don't, there's, I don't think there's any way to really measure how much power is actually being drained over a period of time within the battery bank itself. Uh, but it is obviously using, uh, or it's obviously outputting less power than it actually has at its full capacity. And the reason why I know this is because I've used these battery banks for uh, things like lens warmers for outside uh, astrophotography and things like that. And I've measured these before. And within, you know, a few hours of, you know, running on like medium or high temperature lens warmers, this is outputting the amount that it should. Uh, so I can, you know, I can run a lens warmer on low for eight hours and still have more than half a charge in this battery bank. And I can see that it's used more power than what this is using over a long period of time. So I, I know that um, there is obviously an inefficiency when it comes to a long-term drain on these type of battery banks, which to me kind of, I mean, it doesn't seem worth it to me to use, especially because this is a pretty large battery bank, 30,000 milliamp hours is, is quite a bit. Um, to me, using this on this camera, and the only way that you can use it is when you don't put it in the power saving mode, it seems to me that this isn't really even worth hooking up to a battery bank at that point. Um, if it's only gonna last a couple days longer than it would last on its own, using power saving mode, it doesn't seem worth it at all. It's better just to plug it into power. Um, but we'll let this go a little longer and we'll see what happens. All right, so the battery bank is now off. You can see there's nothing on the display there. It will not turn on. Um, so we're actually just a few hours after the last segment of this video, so it didn't get anywhere near the uh, potential of the battery bank, which is basically about half. So we're gonna continue this video uh, doing something else here. All right, here's what we're doing now. I got the camera plugged into the wall through the USB charging uh, block, and the camera set up in forced power saving mode, even though it's plugged in uh, with wall power. And you can see here on the metering device, this has been running for three hours and it has only measured 15 seconds worth of use. And within that time, it has used one milliamp hour. Uh, so basically what this is doing, what this is showing to me is that this is, I know it's kind of dark, you can't see it over here, but what this is saying is that the camera is going into a power standby mode, which is basically using no power at all. It basically goes to sleep and then it wakes up at whatever interval was set to take a picture and then basically turn back off uh, and sit in a standby mode, and it was, which is a very, very low power state. Um, and I can see that why this camera would work a long time on batteries uh, if, it's, if it uses the power saving mode. Um, but according to the charts with which I looked at online, uh, the max this can run for is six days, uh, even in power saving mode. Now, I find that kind of strange because the battery that's in that camera, I mean, it, it, it holds a lot of power. And I know that with the Brino cameras, you can, uh, well, the one, the one Brino that I have runs on two AA batteries and you can run that for 30 days on two AA batteries you know, if you set like an interval of uh, uh, maybe I think like 20 minutes or something like that, 
Um, so one of the issues with cameras like this is that the fact that it uses a rechargeable battery. Uh, rechargeable batteries don't do very well uh, when they're being drained over a long period of time. And one of those draining features is basically that it sits in a lower power state and it just siphons power off of it even though it's not even really being used. So even though this is plugged into wall power, uh, this doesn't really tell you what the battery is actually using when it's actually running on battery in a low power state. Um, this is just using wall power, so it can only meter that. But I'm assuming it's very similar to the battery banks that uh, I have already used and the fact that it's that has a basically a fan I would call a phantom drain over a period of time where where the camera's not using the power, but it's still the, the battery bank just from being on is using power itself and draining power. Uh, the camera is probably doing something similar when it sits in a lower power state, a very, very low drain. And that's probably why it won't last any longer than six days is just because of that. But if this was using a non-rechargeable battery system, I don't see any reason why this can't last for longer than that. Um, especially with the, you know, this being just a dedicated time-lapse camera when literally all it's doing is turning on and take a picture and, and then turning off. All right, this has been running for 24 hours now on uh, the power saving mode while it's plugged into the wall. And you can see here that it has used only 16 milliamp hours and it has ran for a total of seven minutes and 38 seconds. And if you divide that up, uh, it's not exactly 24 hours, but it's close. If you divide that up, it actually comes out to be exactly what I set to the interval. So every time it wakes up and it takes a photo and then goes back into a standby mode, and that's basically recording how much power it's using during the time that it's on. Um, there's probably a low power state here where this is not able to measure it. Uh, it's probably in the microamps where it's continuously power draining a very, very, very small amount, but over a long period of time. Because if it's only using 16 milliamp hours in 24 hours, I should be able to run this camera on two AA batteries which is uh, over 5,000 milliamp hours, uh, depending on the batteries. I should be able to run it for 350 days in power saving mode, but that's just not the case. The lithium battery that is in here, I believe is it's somewhere like 2,800 milliamp hours, which is, the, which is like one AA battery. Um, so if, even if you cut that in half, it should, run, it, you know, it should run for like nearly half a year on, uh, but it won't. Even in power saving mode, this is only gonna run six days in power saving mode. So if you look at this and you just look at that, yeah, theoretically it should work that like that, but in, in reality it, it doesn't. Um, and I'm, I'm actually kind of disappointed in, in this because uh, even if you were to double the capacity, let's say you put a lithium battery in there that was twice that capacity to be equivalent to two AA's, well, then that should run, it's only gonna run for 12 days theoretically or somewhere around there. And really, if the Brino cameras can run on two AA batteries for 30 to 40 days, um, they should be able to do that too. All right, so here I got a heated hoodie. This is on medium, and I'm running it off the battery bank that I used earlier in the video, which is this 20,000, uh, 20,100 milliamp hour uh, from Anchor. And you can see now I've already had it running for uh, well, it's, it's been running longer than that, but uh, as far as the on time goes, it's been almost a minute. And that's because this thing, as you can see here, when something like a heated hoodie, heated gloves, any kind of heated wear, um, when you have it on a, a setting, like a power setting, low, medium, high, that just pulses the power um, at different intervals. So this is only recording the time that is actually on when it's pulsing, and as you can see, when it's pulsing, it's using about 1.7-ish amps every time it does that. Now, if I turn it on low, uh, that'll pulse less often. And if I turn it on high, it'll pulse more often, about the same amount of power. That's how it works. It's pulsed power. It doesn't actually, it's not like a dimmer switch where it uses less electricity. Um, but as you can see here, it's already used 35 milliamp hours in just that short amount of time. So this here is gonna be a good test just to show that these battery banks are designed for higher power drain over a short time rather than low power drain over a long time. So we should see this used pretty close to its 
uh, maximum or closer to its maximum capacity by doing it this way here to where we can, when we're pulling more power from it. Um, obviously, I, we're not going to get to the 20,000 milliamp hour drain, uh, partly because this is not brand new, although it hasn't been used that much. Uh, and most battery banks, especially batteries themselves, are using, they're only using about 80, 90, well, it depends on the battery type. If it's a lithium battery, you're going to probably use about uh, 80 to 90 percent of its maximum capacity, and or its rated capacity anyways. If it's a double-A battery, like an alkaline battery, it's going to run um, probably about the same as that. It's going to be in, in, within a range of that, uh, maybe a little bit less, uh, maybe 70, 80 um, percent. Also, if you're using a, like a lead-acid battery, so like a, a marine battery or uh, stuff you'd use in battery backup systems, like uh, UPS systems for computers, those can only use, uh, at best, about 40% of their rated capacity. So those are going to be different. But on something like this that uses lithium ion batteries, um, it should be within about 80 to 90% of its total capacity. So we're not going to use it, we're not going to see the full 20,000 milliamp hours used from this, but it should be, uh, if I had to guess, at least 15,000. Uh, 15, so we'll come back when that's drained. All right, so the battery bank is now spent. I just plugged it into this one just to show the display here since the other one was dead. Uh, but it lasted for a while. It used only, uh, well, almost 11,000 milliamp hours. So not even close to the uh, 20,100 that it was rated for. Uh, maybe possibly if I had ran it on high so it didn't have a, a slower drain over a period of time, I could have gotten a little more out of it, possibly. I'm not gonna test that in this video. Uh, but it lasted on medium heat over 12 hours uh, just continuously. I mean, that's that's a long time and at, on medium this hoodie will keep you very warm during the winter time. Uh, so now we're going to move on to something else here. All right, so this part of the video is the original intended test and the true test and the whole point of it all. And that is to run this camera off a of battery bank uh, in power saving mode. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Now, I haven't done this in this video yet, and I wanted to test this before I started to make sure I would be able to complete this, and it is going to work. This battery bank here we just used before in another part of the video, and you can see here it doesn't really show that it's on, the lights are not on. I could push the button and show you that it's on. This is fully charged now. And I used to use this battery bank specifically for my astrophotography rig. I would run my mount off of this, and I can run this a, uh, for a very long time, for days and days and days, not continuously, but without having to recharge it. Every time I put my mount outside, I just plug it in and it'll be ready to go. Uh, it doesn't use a whole lot of power. But this battery bank is a power delivery battery bank, and this port here, the USB-C port, will output 12 volts. I think it also puts outputs 9 volts and then, and then so on and so forth. This here, this little black part here, this is a 12 volt emulator. Uh, I got this online. I don't remember if it was like Amazon or eBay, but I will leave a link in the de uh, description below for some of the parts and components I've used here, such as the battery banks, the emulator, and, and this stuff here. Um, so what this is here, this is a circuit board and I basically just made this 12 volt connector and uh, you know just kind of made it look nice. But it just comes as like a little circuit board. And so when you plug this into here, this tells the battery bank to switch to an output to 12 volts. What it also does is it doesn't allow it to shut off. So even though the lights are not on here, you can see they're not on, when you plug this in, even if I don't have this plugged in, pretend that's not plugged in, this 12 volt emulator will keep this battery bank on. And how do I know that? Because I have left this plugged in with nothing plugged into the end of this before, and in about a week or so, this whole battery bank drained by itself. Nothing got warm, you could touch any of this stuff, nothing got warm at all. It just slowly drained, and I didn't know it at the time. And it was kind of a happy accident because now I remembered that this here stops this battery bank from turning off, which means that I plug this into here and then I plug this into this 12 volt uh, USB splitter. So this is a, just a 12 volt input and it splits it off into two 5 volt USB ports and uh, this doesn't ha do anything to keep this turned on. This is just, this just lights up to let you know that there's power going into it. 
So now this has been plugged in for well over a half an hour now and this has not turned off whatsoever. It also shows that it has not ran at all either. So there's no power coming out of it. So now what we're gonna do after that long explanation is plug this camera in and we're gonna see how long this battery bank will last uh, on power saving mode when the camera has the power saving mode turned on. All right, it has been five days exactly to the hour. And you can see here on the meter how much power the camera has actually used, which has only been 93 milliamp hours. So barely anything. And the total time it's been running is 47 minutes. And I'd like to reiterate that for anyone who might have skipped ahead in the video here, that um, this is reading uh, zero time. So basically, there's, when the camera is in a standby mode, it's not calling for power or anything, and this is not outputting power, it doesn't, the timer doesn't count. So only when this kicks on for the uh, couple of seconds that it does, takes this picture and turn it off, that's the time where it counts how long it's been on and how many milliamps it's actually used. It's also 0.46 watt hours, so not even one watt hour. But if you look at the battery bank, we are down to one light. You can barely see it there. We're down to one light, so 25% power or less in there. So for five days, this is a, uh, as I said before, this is a 30,000 milliamp hour battery bank, and it's only used. What did I say? <laughs> 93 milliamp hour. So it has not used anywhere near the amount of power um, that's in there. The camera has not used anywhere near the amount of power it contains. This is just, as I've said before, it self drains. And this is how pretty much all battery banks are. As far as I know, they all self drain uh, just because they're on. And in this case, you know, before when I was running the camera, not in power saving mode, uh, you could feel here that there was, it was slightly, slightly warm, just, just ever so slightly. In this case, it's, there's really no temperature difference at all. And you know, none of this stuff is warm. Um, not even, you know, not the emulator either. No, nothing is warm. Uh, if I move my hand from here down here, I can tell that there's a slight, slight variation in temperature. It might not even be one degree. Uh, that's how min, min school it is. Uh, if, if I wasn't looking for it, I probably wouldn't even detect that actually. But anyways, that's where we are, where we are right now. And um, I just wanted to document that just in case I lost the information somehow. Uh, and then we'll come back here when this actually is fully drained. And then we'll go from there. All right, it has been almost seven and a half days and this battery bank is finally spent. Um, I have the meter plugged into this other battery bank just so you can see what it actually used. You can see it ran for the camera on time was nearly an hour in those seven and a half days and it used 112 milliamp hour. Very, very little power. But as I said, these battery banks basically self-drain when they're on. Uh, in order to output the power, they're basically just self-draining the whole time, even though the camera is not pulling that power. Now you might think that Wow, that's a long time, seven and a half days. That's, that's a long time to run uh, a device, you know, a camera, just off a battery. Well, it really isn't because it only used a, a very, very tiny portion of the actual power that's in, the, that's in this battery bank. Because this camera right here, this Brino TLC 200 Pro, this is an old camera, runs off four AA batteries, and that thing, I can run it at 20 minute intervals and it'll last for about 40 days without having to touch it or change the batteries or anything. And that's not a lot of power because four AA batteries is about 15 watt hours. This battery bank is 109 watt hours. So not very efficient whatsoever. And the internal battery inside this camera, uh, if I remember correctly, was about 2,800 milliamp hours. And this can only run it by itself internally for six days at 30 minute intervals. And that's exactly what I did here in this uh, portion of this video as I ran that for 30 minute intervals and that's as long as I could run it off this battery bank. So at most, running it with this bank and running with the internal battery, I can run it for maybe 13, maybe 14 days tops between that and that and that's not very efficient at all. So in another video, I will be doing another test using a regular battery uh, that's not a lithium battery such as a lead acid or alkaline and we'll come back and we'll see if we can get a different result 
where we're not having a device such as this where it has to be on in order for it to power something to our regular battery uh, such as double A's or a small lead acid battery it doesn't have to be on it can just be pulling power from it from it as needed and not self draining before I wrap this video up here first of all if you watch this entire video up until this point thank you for watching I know it was a long video however if you only skip to this part at the end of the video this last experiment if you will um, and you have any questions about something else, you think I didn't cover something, it's very likely I covered it in the rest of this video, so you have to go back and watch the entire thing. Um, now, to conclude here, you have to think about why, why would you need a dedicated time-lapse camera? Um, there's a lot of other options out there to do time-lapses, especially these days with all the technology we have. Uh, you have phones, you could use an old phone. Uh, a lot of phones can do time-lapses pretty well. Uh, the only downside is, is you know the battery ain't going to last very long so you'd have to plug it into power or battery bank uh here's this is a, an action cam you can do a gopro this is a Yi e action cam i bought this for like 130 bucks um a few years ago and it also does pretty pretty decent time lapses however just like the uh atli e on time lapse camera it has a uh a little lithium polymer battery in there that's rechargeable and you will have to Put, plug this into power, just like the phone, in order for it to last for a, a long time, more than a couple hours. Um, you have other options too. You can you can use a webcam with a laptop. You could use a, a camcorder and just have it continuously record as long as a memory card or hard drive in there is big enough. Lots of different options out there to do time lapses. So you have to ask yourself, why would you spend so much money on a dedicated time lapse camera? What is it for? Well, a dedicated time-lapse camera is just that. It's dedicated. It means that you don't have to tie up your phone or a GoPro. You may be wanting to use your GoPro for something else within the time that you're using it for a time-lapse. And I'm not talking about short time-lapses because you could use any one of these devices if you wanted to record a time-lapse of an ice cube melting or something like that. It's only going to take a half an hour or an hour. If you're having a camera set up for weeks or months at a time to do time lapses like I do on my channel here, which is, um, you know, plants and things like that, it takes a long time for them to grow. So you want to have a dedicated uh, option to be able to do that and not tie up any of your other devices that you would need to use during that entire time you're using it. So what do you want it to do the, with the camera? You'd want it to last a long time on batteries because uh, you can plug the, you know, the Atli Eon time-lapse camera, you can plug it into power and it will last uh, quite a bit of time. Well, indefinitely, I guess, but it'll last indefinitely on power if you plug it in. But it's very inconvenient to have to plug something into power for a lot of reasons because you the positioning you might want to get it into, that cord's going to be in the way. Um, you know, you could walk and bump that cord and bump the camera, not realize that you moved it and ruin a lot of the time-lapse up until that point, you know, so there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't want to have a time-lapse camera plugged in for weeks on end uh, and not be able to, you know, to move it around conveniently and be free of a wire. So that is one of the downsides of having a time-lapse camera that doesn't last very long on battery because I can literally use a device like this. This this essentially is just an action camera. Where it, can, it can do more than just time-lapses, but it does time lapses pretty well, and I would have to plug it into power just like the Atli Eon time lapse camera to use that. So, really, what's the difference? So, one of the big downfalls I think with the Atli Eon time lapse camera is just the fact that it doesn't last very long on batteries. Considering that I don't have it sitting right here, but I had it in the other part of the video, the Brino TLC 200 Pro and the other uh, cameras in in that lineup. There's uh, a couple different models they have now, which I have uh, another one of them, uh, which is the 1080p version. You know, those will last a long time in batteries, 30 days easy. And uh, just on two AA batteries, I think the um, uh, the 1080p version will. The downside to that is with those cameras, I'm not going to get too much into this, but the Brino cameras, they have the LCD screen on the back of them. And while you're setting it up, you, that LCD screen, even though it's small, it uses quite a bit of power from those batteries while they were, you were using it. So you kind of want to just get it set up and just get it to recording and be done with it. Uh, because the more you use that screen and try to fiddle with it, the less 
time you're going to have on those batteries because it does draw a lot of power. And um, those cameras are designed to really eke out every last bit of power out of those batteries. So while it's running for a period of, say, a month, uh, it's only using such a very, very small amount of power, and it's eking out every last little bit. And if you sit there and fiddle with the camera, the Brino series, if you fiddle with the screen on for you know, five, 10 minutes at a time trying to get a focus and all that kind of stuff, well, you've probably just sucked out about a week's worth of battery power for the time lapse. So anyways, uh, I know it was a long video. Thank you for watching up until this point again. And um, in the next video, as I said before, we're going to do another test with the Atlee Eon time lapse camera using a battery of some type that is not on uh, or not rechargeable. So either um, uh, AA alkaline batteries that are not rechargeable or maybe just a small lead acid battery and um, where it's just pulling power as needed and the battery itself is not connected to any electronics other than just the camera itself. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.